We live in a, a global economy, so our choices affect the climate, not just not the Nordic regions, but the entire planet. It's super dumb. Why can't we just abandon the whole thing with vegetarians and, and just be like, yeah, I, I'm, I eat vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian. It's not about you. It's about what you're, what you're eating, basically. Human action is now influencing all these changes and all Earth systems that makes our Earth kind of stable. So we are the, we are the main force, driving force behind climate change. How we tackle the climate and biodiversity crises will determine what life on Earth will be like. The actions we take or do not take this decade and decades to come will hugely impact future generations. If we take on the challenge of combating these crises, like we take on the pursuit of money and wealth, we already have accomplished a change in mindset that sparks hope. The 2019 landmark global assessment report by IPBES reported 1 million animal and plant species are now threatened with extinction. This is the highest number in human history and the ecological crisis is causing harm also to people. An EUCN study found that competition over increasingly scarce and degraded resources can exacerbate gender-based violence. There is an inequality aspect built into the climate crisis, as the ones that are contributing the least to climate change will suffer the most from its consequences. So I think when it comes to sustainable consumption production, um, we have a clear target to work towards and to work with. So we both have the individual aspect, right? So we have the consumer power of people that can decide what they would like to buy and what they decide to not to buy. But we also have the companies that are kind of steering the or the big part in the global political economy. And as well, we have the state that kind of is the overarching authority when it comes to all kinds of, of politics. I'm just reading the climate news for the week. Uh, as per usual, it's uh, not particularly good. Um, a new scientific paper says that we're speeding towards the 1.5 degree target uh, faster than we expected. So we're currently facing the biggest challenge humankind has ever faced. Uh, our natural resources, our ecological world is being depleted and uh, the climate system is undergoing changes that may lead to irreversible impacts and uh, damage. Yeah, there's so many things you and I can do. By now, most people know the obvious solution. This is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. But personally, I think we can look towards how things are produced and consumed in our society. The Sustainable Development Goals, commonly known as the SDGs, can give us some useful guidelines. Uh, SDG 12 is about responsible consumption and production. And SDG 13 is about climate action. And these two have some really good synergies between them. Uh, synergies are the positive in interactions between the different goals. For example, if we follow SDG 12 and reduce global food waste, this will for sure have a positive impact on our targets for SDG 13 and climate action. I think we all should have pets. Charlie, right here, is a, oh God, fat, good example. If you don't have a girlfriend or a special someone or a family member that you wanna wanna give food to and feed and uh, cozy up in the sofa with, then a cat is definitely a good substitute because that way we get so much more respect for our fellow animal, basically, that we need together to stay alive, really. We live on a small island here in Finland. We work with reaching out to people, both the youth and older ones, and talk about what the biosphere reserve is and other things related to sustainability. We should, we're so obsessed with labels. Like, I can only be a vegetarian if I only eat solely 100% vegetarian stuff and every everyone else and but and if you eat a certain one other thing fish or i don't know chicken on tuesdays then you're a pescatarian or a, a tuesday tuesdaytarian or like 
you, you get what I'm saying? It's super dumb. Why can't we just abandon the whole thing with vegetarians and, and just be like, yeah, I, I'm, I eat vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian. It's not about you. It's about what you're eating, basically. For humanity's sake, yeah, we have to start eating vegetarian stuff. But we don't, like, everything, all the time. Because if you say that, yeah, you can't be vegetarian. You can't be making a difference if you're not com changing yourself completely. That's dumb. It's super hard and not very motivating and fun. What is our interest in sustainability? I, I think this is a really hard question. Or it isn't actually a really hard question. But the thing is that we are interested in sustainability. But, but we're not passionate about it. Yes. To put it, to put it a simple way. Yes. And you feel like we, we're always, or at least I aren't making like actively, can you say that? Conscious, yeah. conscious like decisions. Yeah, about being more sustainable. Or if it's like I'm, I do some parts, but then on the other hand, I do stuff that isn't sustainable. Like mm -hmm. I drive cars quite a lot because of my living situation, and I buy processed food from the store, which isn't good, or I buy new clothes instead of second hand and, and other stuff that that contradict the things I do for the environment mm. but in then we also like or at least I I think you also uh, recycle plastic metal glass paper yeah and eating more vegan not vegan but more vegetarian yeah. more vegetables or fruits and and I mean I I don't buy meat from the store anymore because my father is a hunter so I dare wild caught yeah <laughs> Wild, wild meat. <laughs> uh, and like I stopped drinking from plastic bottle, bottles. I drink from the, this now, metallic one. Like these small stuff. We do like these small things. Yeah, well, we live in a, a global economy. So our choices affect the climate and not just no the Nordic regions, but the entire planet. I think we're all responsible from a personal level to the business up until the state. Uh, we're all responsible for our actions and how our actions impact the climate. I think in the global north in particular we have a responsibility to create climate action because of our historic debt and our overuse of the global carbon budget. For me an important step is to hold businesses accountable. Our consumption choices obviously affect the climate but we need to have more information from businesses so we can make wiser choices on our consumption and this could hopefully influence the production as well to lead to an overall better climate action. Ecological sustainability is nature and the Earth's ability to sustain itself and it's crucial for our ability to survive. Amongst other things, ecological sustainability relates to the functioning of the Earth's biogeochemical system. This includes climate systems, the quality of air, land and water, land use and soil erosion, biodiversity and ecosystem services. When we talk about biodiversity, we talk about the diversity of both species and habitats, and ecosystem services includes, for example, pollination and photosynthesis. So of course this panel of thought when it comes to how we are supposed to consume and when it comes to our production. It's not at all affecting either usage, neither responsible use of, of resources. And it also hampers our true recovery of towards like a green economy. So we cannot continue with business as usual or we cannot exclude um, important voices within uh, within those who participate in, in global governance um, by since they introduce a lot of knowledge but they also introduce a lot of different types of action as those a lot of many organizations that participate here today in regeneration week or regeneration itself I would say um, so from my point of view I think we need to kind of rethink how the system is structured and organized so we can let's say that all democracy and out and we need to consider and listen and bring in the voices of those who actually care and have the ambition to, to work towards uh, sustainability. So in order to combat these issues, we have all, all actors need to be on board. And one can also question why should valuable forces be, be ignored within the theory? So collective act action is at its finest when it's collaboration between a lot of different partners as Free Generation Week here today. So this interlinkage between all these kind of systems and, and interactions with humans and with environment is also why the Sustainable Development Goals 
is very they are very important and also their holistic kind of view on sustainability is something that we need to strive for um, because human actions cannot seem to be categorized within within a category of environmental since we need to speak from as well societal perspective as people that work on those local lands um, whereas they kind of work for it perhaps they work for it in order to make means end uh, but we also need to speak about the, the economic aspects since countries strive for economic growth and companies strive for profits. So the solution is solution is of course cooperation. So we should not be apart, we should rather be all together working with each other. So it goes around more. Whoop.